See what you want, get what you see. Hello and welcome to the Unlocked Podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Locke, professional speaker, magician and confidence coach. And quite simply, Unlocked is a journal of self-improvement. I'm talking to the experts, authors and successful people from around the world, as well as sharing my mishaps and magical adventures in my own life too, to unlock the best version of ourselves. My aim is to give you some insight and inspiration so you can unlock the best version of yourself too. Now, if this sounds like your cup of tea, then hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my latest episodes released every Wednesday. Now, relax and enjoy the show. I never hit a shot, not even in practice, without having a very sharp, in-focus picture of it in my head. Jack Nicholas, the PGA world record holder, author and philanthropist. Yes, welcome to this episode of the mini-series of The Success Principles by Jack Canfield, where I review each chapter of The Success Principles. And this one is all about see what you want and get what you see. And in this chapter, we're going to talk about affirmations and visualizations, which are two most underutilized tools for success. And I'm a huge fan of affirmations and vision boards as well, which I do have a lovely picture uh, a great little uh, image of about four, eight, twelve, sixteen 16 pictures on my vision board. I'll put a little picture into the Patreon community where you can see this. But yeah, this is a really, really great episode. And this is all about the power of the mind and how the mind can help you achieve your success. So in this episode, we're going to learn how to create and use affirmations in the correct way to help speed up and accelerate the achievement of your goals. Now, if you haven't listened to the previous episodes, especially episode 82, which is Unleash the Power of Goal Setting to Achieve Your Vision, it's definitely worth going back to to help map out the goals that you have already written down. And if you've not listened to the start of the episodes, then why not? <laughs> you can go back and listen to episode 53, 55, 60, and 77, which I've reviewed the previous chapters of the success principles. But we're going to talk about how affirmations and visualizations will help you achieve your success. And we're going to create an affirmation for at least three of the goals from the previous episode on 82 and maybe one for a breakthrough goal as well and we'll touch into a little bit about vision boards as well about why it's really important now one of the key things i wanted to really highlight excuse me from my voice there a little bit of a cold coming i believe um one of the key things i wanted to share with you was the idea of why this works and jack notes this in the success principles that scientists now know that the brain is a goal-seeking organism which means if you give it a compelling colorful real clear clarity image of what you want it will actually work with you and for you uh, night and day to create those opportunities and uh, the resources needed to achieve that vision so um, one of the things that we've discussed many times on this podcast is the reticular activating system in short, if you've not heard of it, it's basically when you buy something new, like a brand new car, that's the classic example. You buy a brand new car and then you see it everywhere. Now, those cars didn't suddenly just drop out of the sky. They were always there. It just means that your brain is now focusing on it because the brain deals with so many bits of information every single day. If it was to uh, absorb it all in and actually uh, take it all in, you, you probably implode. So your brain has lots of filters in your brain that helps filter out all of those informations. So half the time, you can't always uh, focus on all those bits that are there. So that's why when you're consciously aware of something like a brand new car, you start seeing it everywhere. So what is actually happening here is when you're thinking of those crystal clear images or telling yourself some positive affirmations, lots of things are happening. So with the reticular activating system, that filters those millions of lots of information, images, uh, messages and impressions and then it will help you to reach that goal so if you was to set an affirmation of like a ted talk i am uh, happily walking off stage of a ted talk feeling great knowing that i've just blown the audience away with my amazing ted talk for some reason what happens is your brain will start to find those resources 
A great example that Jack puts in the book is uh, if you've ever thought about speaking at maybe one of your uh, industry, wherever you work, at a convention as a way to boost your career, then immediately you may remember that you recently met the National Education Director last month at a trade show. And then, as he said, that's your reticular activating system, bringing the ideas and the resources that are already there to help you achieve your goal. So what happens is when you start telling yourself all of these affirmations and visualizations every single day, your brain will then start filtering all that information to help you find the stuff that you need. Now, there are a few steps from this chapter to help you write an affirmation. This isn't just, I am brilliant, I am bold, I am brave. They are all great things there, but there's a few steps to help improve your affirmations to make it even more powerful to help you find those resources that you need to achieve your goals. And the eight steps is this. The first step is to start with, I am. So I am, that means that your subconscious mind interprets these two powerful words as commands. Okay, so I am. The second step is to use the present tense. One of the most important things here is to describe what you want as though it has already been accomplished. So my example earlier on, I am confidently walking off the TEDx stage knowing that I've just blown away the audience with my amazing talk. Present tense. So you have to describe it as if you've already accomplished it, not it will happen or it will be. You say it as if it already has. So if it's like a financial goal or even a weight goal, you could say, I am uh, confidently weighing myself on the scales and seeing how happy I am in the mirror knowing I've lost three stone, whatever it might be. So start with I am. That's the first step. The second step is to use your present tense. Number three is to state it in the positive. So don't think about what you don't want, because remember, the brain starts finding all that information. You can't process the negative, but affirm what you do want. Number four is keep it brief. So um, this one is just to keep it short, to be really memorable. If you have it too long, it's really hard. If you ever ask someone, can you tell me what your affirmation is? And they go, yes, uh, I am uh, confidently um, uh, walking from the bank, knowing that uh, a check of £100,000 has just been deposited by blah, 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 blah. It, It's just too long. So you have to keep it really short and brief. And this is so you can allow to write this on a business card, on a, a post note or something like that, that you can put obviously in your diary, something like that. Okay. Step five is make it specific. Vague affirmations produce vague results. So you really got to make sure it's specific. So if, if, for example, my affirmation of a TED talk, if it's TEDx Peterborough, it would be I am confidently walking off the TEDx stage in Peterborough. Okay, so make it really specific where that affirmation is, because then that helps to build those images in your mind. Number six, obviously include an action word, which is ending in I-N-G. So this is what we call an active verb, and it adds more power by involving an image of doing it. All right. Number seven is use at least one dynamic emotion or a feeling word. So if you include uh, like an emotional state that you'd be feeling if you'd already achieved it. So if it's a scale thing for like weight, it could be the beaming smile that you now have knowing that uh, you've successfully uh, lost some weight. If it's a financial goal, it could be, again, that feeling of wonderfulness knowing that you can now afford that thing that you've been saving up for all right the last thing is to make the affirmations for yourself not others so example uh, enjoying uh, so making sure just really that you are uh, affirming it for yourself not for other people so your behavior it's nothing to do with someone else so would you like a couple of examples Yes, Ricky, let's do it. Okay, so for example, this was one of my goals uh, for pre-wedding and this was about exercise. So the goal was to exercise five days a week until um, September the 9th, which was a combination of hit and running and to weigh uh, about 15 stone, seven pounds. That was like the exact specific measure I wanted to do. So the affirmation using the the steps that we've just gone through, those eight steps, my affirmation goal was I feel ecstatic and elated that I am healthier and I weigh 15 stone, seven pounds. All right. That is the affirmation goal that I'm repeating in my head. The visualization part of that statement would be that I see myself looking down at the scales in boots. This was uh, in my mind at boots in Bourne, where I live. Um, and seeing the digits 15 stone, seven pounds. And I have the biggest smile. And Danielle says, oh, my God, well done. That was the visualization statement that I was playing in my mind like a movie. All right. Another example. Uh, and, and I've changed the numbers here, obviously, just because we don't want to review, uh, review sensitive information. So I've made a complete 
a random number here. But this was a financial goal in the business, and it was, I will increase my monthly income to £10,000 a month by December 2021. So obviously, I've been reviewing these chapters now for about a year now. Um, so that was the goal. So the affirmation goal, again, is the stating it in the positive and present tense, I am, uh, about me, I am so proud and happy, there's the emotive part of that, that I am now successfully receiving £10,000 a month into my bank account so there we go, just from the steps again, it's got starting off with I am, uh, an emotion of how you feel, I am happy, present tense that I'm receiving £10,000 a month in my business bank account. The visualization statement of that one would be, I see myself opening up my banking app and seeing I've earned and received £10,000 each month and I'm jumping with joy, feeling proud and successful. So... Um, the other, th yeah. So I won't do any others. I'll maybe, maybe for the patrons, I'll share a couple more. But there you go. So a couple of things there, just to note. Remember, there is the eight steps of what you have to do. The idea of this is to really make sure it's a, a nice, bold statement that combines all the other information into it as well. So to go back, obviously, eight steps. Turn me page over. Here we go. So start with I am. Use the present tense. So describe it as if it's already been accomplished. State it in the positive. Keep it short and brief. Make it specific, include an action word ending in ing and use at least one dynamic emotional feeling word. And then eight, the last step is to make affirmations for yourself, not for others. So lots of really cool things here. One of the things that I do, and Jack explains this in the book, is about having these affirmations everywhere. Now, I don't really carry a wallet around with me a lot of the time because I use my phone sometimes to pay for stuff. But um, one of the things he does recommend is to write down your affirmations. So I've actually got three because part of episode 82, we talked about three big goals that we were going to look for or work to. And um, uh, you can write it in your wallet. For me, I've actually got like an A5, A6, I think it is, frame right next to my bed that has my four affirmations. One is a finance goal, which is the one I've already repeated, but with a different number. I can't tell you which number that is. That's just a little thing just for me. The exercise goal. The, the This one was actually, this one I completed actually earlier on this year. And that the goal was to complete a coaching qualification by June 2022. And that was for the NLP work that I'm doing. So the affirmation statement was, I feel proud and happy that I've completed my qualification knowing I'm on the right path for my future. The visualization statement was, I open up my emails to see, congratulations, you've completed your qualification and I see my certificate of completion and I'm proud to display it. And now I actually achieved it just by repeating that over and over because I found the resources to go find where I need to go do that qualification and I completed it. But I have that on the side of my bed every single day so that once in the morning I wake up, I see it, I can read it, I can read it out loud, I read it to myself and that programs me to then power me up for that day. Miracle Morning fans, if you've gone back to the episode with the Miracle Morning, this is a great way of looking into that uh, and using that first part of your morning to power yourself up with the A of the saver model of affirmations. The second thing is I do it at night as well. So before I go to sleep, I can see this right in front of me, right next to my alarm clock which means that that's going into my mind. So maybe I'll be dreaming about those resources of where to find to achieve those goals. By doing this exercise, I've already achieved um, two to th almost three, then we'll call it three, three out of the four goals, affirmations that I have wrote on the side of my uh, my bed. One was the finance goal, the coaching qualification. The weight one, I kind of got close to it. And the fourth one is obviously the TED Talk, which I've talked about previously. Now, Jack does talk about how powerful this is because he has a story in the book, which is about his affirmation story. Basically, he was uh, working really, really hard and making about $25,000 a year, which um, is, is, is quite a lot of money back then. But obviously, at the time, it was still quite a low number. But uh, he wanted to be much more successful than that. And he wanted to earn about four times as much as that and actually earn £100,000 a year. So using this model of the eight steps, he said, I am stating the present, I am happily and easily earning and saving and investing 100000 a year. Now, obviously, the key thing here is this isn't like a law of attraction thing. By just saying affirmations, this is going to happen. Just alone, the words are not enough. Obviously, you need to add images too. So that's where we add that visualization statement to help find that picture. Now, the more radical you can make it, the better. 
So I have a vision board that's in front of me that has a lot of these goals on there and that helps me to visualize it. One of them is a TED stage. I look at that every day. And when I say that affirmation of my TED talk, it helps to program me to help power me up and find those resources of what I want to do and put myself into that state. What Jack did to find out how to get the 100,000 a year, he decided to blow up a huge 100,000. He made like a $100,000 bill and he taped it to the ceiling of his bed which meant, as you can imagine, when he went to bed and when he woke up every single day, he'd look at the ceiling and he'd see that $100,000 bill right above him. So each morning when he woke up, he'd see the bill, he'd close his eyes and he'd just repeat that affirmation. I'm happily and easily earning, saving and investing £100,000 a year. And he just imagined what it would be like to enjoy £100,000 a year. Now, obviously... Like he says in the book, before we reveal the actual results, which were very, very good, um, just by using this technique and keep thinking about that, there is some science of why this actually happens of in your subconscious mind. Now, it's actually called structural tension in your subconscious part of your brain. So basically what happens is that your brain wants to close the gap between what you're saying and what you see in your mind. Big vision statement of that $100,000 bill. And then obviously the affirmation um, words that you're actually saying out loud. What happens by continuing repeating and viewing that goal as if you've already achieved it, you're increasing this structural tension, which means your brain wants to resolve the tension and get back to equilibrium. So it just stimulates you to find it. It's basically like saying, like Jack says in the book, all right, Ricky, we get it. You keep going on about it. So we're just going to have to do this and get it. And it will help filter through your reticular activating system to find all the resources and all the images and all the things that it needs to help you. Yes, your brain is actually your friend and it wants to help you, which is a good thing. With Jack, about a month after he uh, started focusing on that image of the $100,000 bill above his head, uh, he kept repeating his affirmation, he kept closing his eyes, kept visualizing that lifestyle, what that would look like, and he actually got a breakthrough idea come through in his mind about how he could achieve that. Now, as you know, Jack Canfield wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, um, which is a huge, huge book and uh, probably made him probably obviously a very, very rich man and probably the man that he is today because of this. Because of his breakthrough idea, he generated an income of £92,325, which is a huge difference to the £25,000 that he was already on. Now, obviously, some people would say that's not exactly £100,000, Ricky. Now, as we said in previous episodes, there's no such thing as failure, only outcomes. But bloody hell, that's pretty good going from £25,000 to £100,000. Another part in the book, which I think is really interesting, is that um, he decided to then repeat that to see if he could happen, can do it again. And he actually then increased it to a million pounds, which is just by doing this same thing. So this is the really simple thing. All you have to do is to write an affirmation of each of your goal. So first step is to write down your goal. So go back to the previous episode, which was 82, about um, unleashing the power of goal setting. And you'll find those three goals that you started to write down based on your life vision or what's really important to you. The next step then would be to write an affirmation for each of that goal. Like my example, I had a finance goal. I wanted to earn a certain amount of money each month. So you write down what it is you actually want. In my case, it was the example of I will increase my monthly income to £10,000 a month by specific a date. For me, that was December 2021. All right. The next thing then is to write that affirmation of the eight steps we've already covered. For me, it was I am so proud and happy that I'm now successfully receiving £10,000 a month into my bank account. Then the next step, third and final step, is just to write a statement to help you visualize that happening. Jack's case, he blew it up. He made a thing like you could mock some up on Canva or Photoshop of you if it's like me with a TED Talk. Photoshop a picture of me, Ricky, on standing on a TED Talk stage. For me, with a finance goal, my visualization statement was just me imagining what that would look like of seeing £10,000. Now, actually, one of the things I did earlier on this year with my podcast goal to get into the top 10, I mocked up, stuck it on my vision board, a picture of the chartable top 10 podcast for self-improvement, and I photoshopped my little image and stuck it on there as number one now obviously as we know from previous episodes it got to 67 which is fascinating and how cool is that but that helped to visualize and get that from 
out of the charts up into the top 70, which is brilliant. So you can have real fun with this and make things up, cut things up, stick things up if it helps you visualize it, uh, mock up pictures on Canva, whatever you want to do. But the real key thing is there is to just, you know, think about the three goals from previous episode on episode 82 and then to write an affirmation, eight steps, start with I am, use your present tense, stay in the positive, keep it brief, make it specific, include an action word ending in ing, use at least one dynamic emotion or feeling word in that. So I'm happy, I'm positive, And then make sure that the affirmation is about you and nobody else. Give this a go. I promise you, like we said, with that structural tension, it will help your brain start to find all of those resources that you need to start achieving all of your goals. I've been using this for about a year now and it's bloody brilliant. It helps me understand what I need to do and fill that information to achieve my goals. And like I said, out the main four that I stick next to my bed, I've already achieved three out of the four just by using this method. But I would love to hear from you, the listeners. Tell me what your affirmations are or what goals you currently have and maybe what affirmations you might create from this. And let me know what comes from this. What are the results that you hear from this? As always, thank you to the amazing patrons of this podcast. Thank you, Anthony Howe, Jasmine Barnes, Sherry Brenton, Chloe Wilmot, Steve McDermott, Chris Lovett, Rory Barnes, and Sarah Kay. You are all amazing for supporting this podcast. But good luck with your affirmations and visualizations, and good luck unlocking the best version of yourself. For now, I'll say goodbye, and I'll join you for another episode of the Success Principles coming soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.